Hello, hello, hello. It's your boy, Caleb. And I'm hosting another episode of The After Her. And with me, as always, is a guy whose face you love to see, Jerry. What's up? Dude, Tuesday Booze Day. Oh, Tuesday Booze Day. I was thinking that. I beat you to it again, bitch. Oh, two right. two shows in a row, you man. Got, got you, got you. Stolen valor. But we got another guest on the show. G, he's with us. Gang, gang. Gang, gang, bitch. Gang, gang, bitch. We are all here. It's another episode of The After Herf on February the 7th. So, uh, Super Bowl's coming up, guys. So, we got to talk about insane bets. We already know we all pretty much want the Eagles to win this thing. But there are some crazy prop bets going on. And we want to know some of your favorite prop bets. Comment when this video comes out. Let us know what you're betting. But um, some crazy ones out there, guys. Um, you can bet the coin toss, heads or tails. Who's going to win it? You could bet the Gatorade color. You could also bet how long the national anthem is going to be. Is it going to be over or under? I think it's like two minutes and 36 seconds. You could also bet what song Rihanna is going to sing first. So, guys, what is your favorite crazy prop bet of the Super Bowl? I just love the idea that you can just bet on like Gatorade colors and shit. <laughs> That's fucking, it's great. What color do you think? I'm going to just go, it's going to be orange. Orange? Yeah. Uh, Gio, what do you say the Gatorade's going to be? Purple. All right. Purple Gatorade. I'm going to go with the uh, Arctic Blue. You know, the blue Gatorade. The Arctic Blue. Never trust someone that names the actual flavor of Gatorade. It's only color. All right. The blue. The blue. <laughs> Dude, but other than that, there's some other crazy bets. Like, um, you can bet that there'll be no kickoffs or punts returned for a touchdown. And some crazy asshole better out there wagered 35K that no kickoff or punts would be returned for a touchdown. He spent $2,500 on that, and the profit would only... No, he spent thirty five k on it. The profit would only be 2500 I so feel like Why would you bet that much to only win that little? But they're so rare. It's like that guy in the Chargers game when they were up 27 <laughs> and nothing, and he bet him, what, it was a $1.4 million, and he lost it? Yeah. Dude, there's some crazy bets. Uh, Gio, but here's the thing, though. If you have that much to wager... You don't care if you lose it. Very true. Here's my favorite one that I've seen so far. All right. Combined jersey numbers of all touchdown scorers over 160.5 or under 160.5. So you add up all That's the jersey. That's interesting. Like, under. Well, all you need is two guys in the 80s to score a touchdown, and it's over. Travis Kelsey. And Dallas Goddard. Oh, Both there, you of go. the, like, there you go. That is. I still took the under. Because yeah, if you hope for AJ Brown, you know Juju, you low Devontae guys. Smith is yeah, he's six. Basically, you just don't want two Travis Kelsey touchdowns. Which <laughs> so <laughs> are you betting that, Gio? I, or no? It's not very good odds. It's over <laughs> minus one hundred five, under minus one fifteen. I would take like the a, over. I would take the over. Uh, coin toss. There's some fun ones. There's uh Chiefs to win the coin toss and win the game. Eagles to win the coin toss and win the game. Team to win the coin toss, you could bet either or. And it's pretty much even money, which makes sense because it's... 50-50 chance. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what is it here? I love the fact that since it's Philly in there, there's like all these prop bets about the Philly special to happen. Like Any uh, non-QB to have a passing touchdown is plus 2,200. So Does you- Vegas have Will the Ritz-Carlton get burned down again? I haven't seen that. It could be on Caesars. I don't know. Uh, Gio, did you take one of those Philly special bets? Or are you going to? I'm thinking... Let's see here. I think I like the uh, any pit player to have a pass completion, a reception, and a rush attempt. Oh, right. that's a good one. That's plus 900 for like a fucking $10 bet. Why not? You got two good quarterbacks who are possible of that. Um, I, I think Hertz would be more like... I feel like Mahomes wouldn't get a pass thrown to him. Here is one of my favorite bets that I've seen. Some person bet eight eight dollars that the Eagles would score exactly four points for the whole game, and if it wins, the odds are ten thousand to one. They'd win eighty k on an eight dollar bet if the Eagles only score four points. So two safeties. <laughs> I don't know how they came up with that, but that's what their bet is. I feel like you just gave them eight dollars. <laughs> yeah, pretty yeah. much. The let, could you imagine? I, I'm cashing out instantly though if they offer like something <laughs> crazy. 
<laughs> Anything over eight dollars. All right, yeah, like yeah, uh, they have one safety, and cash then like out. Mahomes is pinned at the one. Cash out. <laughs> uh, it's thirty k. Thirty k. Yeah, yeah, I'm out. I'm out. All right, I got two more other crazy bets before we move on. Um, so we're speaking of the coin toss. Some person bet nineteen k on two separate coin toss bets. One was that he bet ten k that it would be heads, and another nine point six k that the Chiefs would win the toss. Who's got nineteen thousand dollars to just toss on that, and why? Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> yeah, I, it could have been him. Money Mayweather. Um, another crazy bet I've seen as people are betting uh, Gardner Minshew to win the MVP if Jalen Hurts gets hurt. That is a insane bet, but if it happens, that'll hit and pay out like crazy. I think the odds are like sixty five hundred to one. That is an insane hit. I mean. I would just find it hysterical if another backup Eagles quarterback won the Super Bowl. <laughs> Fitting. It could happen. Do they, Nick, does Gardner Nick Minshew Foles? get a statue Nick, if he wins? Nick Foles? I don't know. Does Big Nick, uh, Big Dick Nick have one? Yes. He, yeah, so Gardner Minshew would definitely deserve that one. That mustache? That needs to be thoroughly detailed on that fucking thing. I think he should just get a statue of his mustache, not of him, just the mustache. Yeah. You can like walk up behind it, like a, like almost like one of those fucking things they have at weddings, <laughs> and ride it. Yeah. <laughs> some people ride. will definitely ride it for sure. Mustache it's Philly, ride. man. There's some weird people. <laughs> All right, I like that, man. So, uh, we got our Gen Z word of the day. You guys ready for it? Here it is, man. I guess. All right. Here's my word of the day. It's called dead dogs or on dogs. What do you guys think it means? Dead dogs. <laughs> Literal dead that's, dogs. That's that's what it means in the English language. I have no idea. All right, so this means like so like you could what put it in a sense right. to be like yo that's dead dogs. Yo, on like you know I saw this guy laying in the gutter, just heroin needle in his arm. He he was like pants down to his ankles on dogs or dead dogs. It means like dead ass, like seriously dead ass. That's what it means. It means I'm not playing. It means it's completely serious. I've never heard this before. I just looked it up. I have to say this. I could care less about the Gen Z word of the day. Because they're all so fucking bad right now. Yeah, we've only had like one plus on that, right? Just one. I forgot which one it was. It was with Gio here. Um, It could be taken as a statement of fact or as a question. You could ask it as a question. So just based on what I... That dog, is that cigar bussing? This one's not bad. I'm actually smoking a diesel delirium from 2020. It is a limited edition from the diesel line. Um, not a bad cigar. Finishing up. I started it earlier. Not bad. But, guys. My man is riding that AJ Fernandez jack. Is diesel like AJ Fernandez? Yes. Okay, I wasn't sure. So, guys, are we riding with uh, dead dogs or on dogs? Or? No. I'm not riding with it. Nah. Nah, no, we ain't stupid. riding with that. All right, Gen Z, try again next week. <laughs> what are are they one for two? Maybe one for three at this point. One for three. They did, we 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 weren't rocking. Oh with yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, two two no's and one. Yeah, we were. Yeah, we weren't rocking with Chuji. Chuji because we got on bussin. We got bussin, not bussin. Way right. better. All right. Fair enough. D- disappointed Gen Z. All that get great a- work you guys do for nothing. <laughs> get get a uh, you know, I need more dangly cross earring. Less dead dog. Less fidget spinner. All right. On ca- on, no cap. Not bussing. All right. Up next, guys. We're going to keep things going with the NFL a little bit. Tom Brady's sand on the spot where he announces retirement on Instagram is going for sale for over 100 k Is that... What is going on here, guys? So I just put up a little picture of it. And uh, this is an unbelievable story to me because... There's like 124 bids. <laughs> I, I didn't know that. Yeah, there's like 124 bids on it. Somebody actually put a fucking bid in for 100k for a fucking jar of granules of salt, uh, sand. I mean, come on, dude, that's out of control. I laugh at it and think it's hilarious because I just think of the South Park episode with the poop with Tom Brady's poop. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's all I think of. What you think he could actually sell a shit? Oh, 100 percent, Tom Brady could sell a shit. Someone would buy it. I, I just want to throw this out there. Is it legal to take sand from a place and make 100K on it? Because technically, that would be like property of whatever city it's in, right? 
Uh, it's public space. It's a beach. Yeah, I know, but it's owned by the city. That's like saying if like driftwood can't be like repurposed and sold. So or burned. Yeah, like <laughs> so the person who is selling this, they said they were at the exact same spot where Tom Brady was giving the speech on his TikTok. They said they were right behind him. They said they've been a Brady fan their whole entire life. They were super excited when they saw him filming this. They realized what he was filming, and when he left, they gathered up the sand. So that's why they were there at that moment in time, that spot, and that's why they, you know, packed it up and they're getting ready to sell it. I think it's kind of funny because it's just a plot of sand where a man was standing, but it is the goat. So did we even touch on the fact that Tom Brady finally? retired well we didn't but do you guys believe he's actually retired yes quits? You did think you see done? that awkward ass picture he posted him in his underwear him in his underwear like am i doing it right trying to make fun of julian edelman like come on dude <laughs> he was just you know what he's got that 26 year old girlfriend maybe he's in tune for another one this is like a leonardo <laughs> dicaprio version two i guess you know what tom brady keeps getting older the girls keep staying the same age <laughs> That's the thing we got going on here. What I want to know yeah, is baby. if that is the weirdest celebrity item that was bought. Like, oh, I guarantee there's stranger out there. Oh, here we go. I just Googled this. 19 of the wildest, uh, most expensive bits of celeb memorabilia sold at auction. I can't even imagine. What's the top three? Number one, Justin Timberlake's French toast. <laughs> sold four. One thousand twenty-five dollars in the year two thousand. Okay, I gotta ask: How do you preserve his French toast? I don't know if it's anything like a <laughs> McDonald's French fry. It'll be in <laughs> it'll the, last forever. It'll be there forever, I guess. Nineteen-year-old Kathy Summer said, "I'll probably freeze dry it, then seal it, and put it on my dresser." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. All right, what's number two? Scarlett Johansson's used tissue. Oh man! How much do you think it sold for? 5k but i'm gonna say there's with, some lunatic with a, out there with a caveat whoever bought this tissue should be locked up you got some problems <laughs> you were actually pretty close 5300 <laughs> uh, back in 2008 and apparently she claimed that samuel jackson had given her the cold so the tissue was more valuable and she put it on ebay and donated it to charity. she did it herself she like just what? jokingly did it <laughs> What and, a dirtbag. But she donated all the money to charity. How much do you think somebody would pay for the herpes that Derek Jeter gave her? Jesus. Allegedly. <laughs> I, don't know no if want, I don't know if you want to contain that because it might be a virus. Sample. Okay, this is this one. This one number so three. far takes the cake. Number three. All right. John Oliver, the weird comedian, bought Russell Crowe's jockstrap. <laughs> how much do you think he paid for it 20k i was gonna say about 10k 20 eight thousand five hundred forty dollars but the caveat was it was russell crowe's jockstrap that he wore for gladiator <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh you're not entertained <laughs> <laughs> apparently john oliver was very entertained that he had to buy it number four like this one makes a little bit of sense i guess a wig worn by uh andy warhol got to be a big art fan for that one uh how much do you think that uh sold for 10k a wig 12k caleb is price is right on this motherfucker yeah ten thousand eight hundred dollars well <laughs> caleb's searching for his 15 seconds of fame that's right that is an andy warhol quote um just to made it <laughs> since we're talking about the tom brady thing the person who the girl who did it she said you'll find no other listing like this no one else took a sample from february 1st after tom brady posted his retirement she said you're owning a piece of history and the very piece of land the goat retired on that is her selling point so i they got blessings to her she was at the right right spot right time so. i can't believe people can get away with this I guess you can sell anything nowadays, dude. People sell their underwear and vending machines nowadays, especially. In I Japan. hope we get to a point where we're fucking selling Caleb's fucking shit. The the original tinfoil hat from Down to Herf. Yeah, right. This is gonna be a special item one day when Down to Herf <laughs> and the After Earth blow up. We'll always make sure it's the OG. Yeah. What was the number one then? Okay, so like the most it went expensive. in reverse order for the most expensive. So this one actually makes sense. 
uh, Michael Jordan's signed sneakers that he wore during his rookie year. Oh, that millions. he gifted to a Nuggets ball boy. Uh, that is one point two million. I'm gonna go with like three point five mil. One point five million. What did I say? One point two. All right, you got. Let's that one. go. Yeah. All right, here's another fun. This one actually is not bad. Darth Vader's original mask. Oh my god! Uh, so there's a lot of Star Wars geeks out there. Um, is it more or less than the last item? Less. All right, maybe like seven fifty k, eight hundred k, eight hundred eighty five thousand. Woo! Ooh, I, price is right rules, bitch. You got me. You're gone. And I know we got to get up, move on, but there's just one last one that I wanted to throw out there, just because it made me laugh. William Shatner's kidney stone sold for twenty five thousand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would mean that he had to go and collect it and yeah, give it to somebody. I was gonna say, who verifies that? <laughs> like, is it a nurse or a doctor that was in that room? One hundred percent. It was some kind of doctor. It was like, I'm gonna get rich off this. One last cra- Captain Kirk. One last crazy thing that we're on the selling of celebrity items. I heard once that the gun and or the bullets that killed um, Lee Harvey Oswald was sold for an incredibly high amount of money that Jack Ruby owned. I don't know how true it is or not. We could look it up and we could save it for another episode. But I heard the gun and or the bullets that killed Lee Harvey Oswald sold for a crazy amount of money. How do you guys feel about that? Because that's like a murder weapon. I was going to say, I uh, think they're allowed to kill JFK. That. I don't know. Uh, no, but that's... Jack no, Ruby's no. gun that killed Lee Harvey Oswald. It was the guy who killed... The guy that killed Jay. How was that gun not in evidence? Well, they got the murderer. Like, I mean, I could imagine. He but did it live on TV in front of a, a whole group of people. It was just weird. Is that Austin, Texas? Uh, Dallas. Dallas. Dallas, Texas. Yeah. All right. Well, speaking of, speaking of crazy things in the NFL, this could bring us to my conspiracy of the week. Oh, my God. It's oh, finally oh. time. Dude, it looks so ridiculous every time I see it. I can't get it to... Turn there. it around, buddy. Turn it around. That looks good. All right. All That's right. beautiful. So That's beautiful. If you guys don't know, uh, recently we had Adrian Foster, former NFL running back from the Texans. He was on a Barstool Sports podcast, and he claimed that the NFL is scripted and rigged. And when I mean scripted, he says that the NFL hands you a script, almost like a drama playbook, for the whole year, and that the teams practice to stick to the script. I and actually I have, for a clip, one, I have a clip of it for all you, right, too. Yes, we'll play that. So we'll It's funny, it. before we started taping, uh, Arian was telling me about how the NFL is rigged and how every year he used to get a script. Yeah. Day one of training camp that would mm-hmm. get dropped off at his locker. Mm-hmm. And you would have to, you know, it was like week one, you'll do this. Week two, you're going to have a hamstring injury. Week three, this is going to happen. Yeah. Week four, you're going to get three touchdowns. Mm-hmm. And so then you just have to, did you memorize those? Before the season started, would you go and rehearse the script before every game? Uh, we were really dedicated to it. So it was more so like um, that's what practice was about. It was about practicing the script. Like this is what goes on and this is what we have to do mm-hmm. in order to. Yeah. And this referee is going to miss this call yeah, because we, they hate you yeah. and they love the Colts. Yeah, that sort like, of thing. Uh, WWF. So it's like, you yeah, know, we know what's going to happen, but you still got to put on a show. Yeah. What did yeah. you think when you got the script in 2016 that said your career was going to fall off a cliff when you stopped believing in God? <laughs> so that stupid. was 2015. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah. It's funny. Before we start. That, uh, was, that was my favorite part, by the way. That guy dogged him and clowned him at the end. That was great. So what I think is really funny about this uh, conspiracy theory is like, say this is true. Which I don't think it is, okay? <laughs> I'm just throwing this out there. Say this is true. Can you imagine being like Damar Hamlin? And you're just, they're just like, here, man, here's a script. You have to fucking die in week 16, dude. And you're just like, <laughs> what? You're like, yo, dude, listen, it's a, it's the script, man. You have to die in the yeah, middle of the game. Like, you're going to become important now. <laughs> like, you're a star in this league now, dude. Like, Dude, Jesus. yes, maybe it's a little classless, but imagine getting this script, okay? Just just bear with me for a minute. Or or how about... Dog, you saw what Leo had to do to get an Oscar? He had to wear a bear husk. You gotta die. You gotta die on national TV? We're gonna cancel a game, dude. This is very important because this is for been, a number one seed, okay? And hasn't been done ever before in the history in the NFL. Actually, somebody did die. 
Yeah, one but, they other kept, player. but they kept playing. Okay. Yeah, but listen, I'm talking about a canceled game. Listen. Another one. Tua. Tua, you got to <laughs> go full retard after you get fucking thrown on the ground and you got to throw up. This is sponsored by Westside Gun. You got to start throwing up your gang signs, dude. Like, you got to sell this. You're it's fucked re- up. He's not really concussed. So it's all part of the script. It's part of the script, man. Yeah. What do you think, G? I think this is just so absurd. It is absurd, like, obviously. I, I just can't even, like... To anyone that gives us any credence whatsoever, like, do you know how much, like, money is tied to, like, the fact that things need to not be scripted? There was a fact Elaborate. that... Elaborate. So... <clears throat> there was a big controversy recently with uh, UFC fights. Like they pulled UFC fights from every like they suspended gambling on them because one coach uh was like letting guys fight injured and betting against the other guy. Yeah. And every gaming commission was like no more betting on the UFC until this is straightened out. They suspended this guy, fire released the fighter that fought injured and said, anyone who keeps this guy as a coach will not fight in the UFC. And this dude was blacklisted in 48 hours to get gambling money back. So not to let everything I just said go out of context and people think that it's like a big joke, right? Sarcasm, guys. It's sarcasm. So these guys go out there and they put their bodies on the line weekly. Okay, nobody loves the NFL more than me, Gio, and Caleb. We sit in here, we love the NFL. So for them and somebody... To go on the air on, on so, something that's definitely going to get pushed out into the world, okay? Uh, the, and say these, as, like, they're they're crazy to, to think this stuff. So please don't take what I said out of context. This was absolute sarcasm. The things that happened in the NFL this year were crazy. Oh, yeah. The two injury, DeMar Hamlin, those weren't jokes that I just made. But th- imagine getting that as a script. Well, that would be crazy. Exactly. Imagine right. getting that as a script. And second of all, this is on a Barstool podcast. That clip alone that Jerry shared got almost six million views. Dude, you got to be crazy to believe that. I'm sorry, but like, just imagine you're Deshaun Watson and you get the script. <laughs> 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 Sexual assault's not funny. I'm just, oh my god, bro! I'm just saying, like, hey, dog. <laughs> just so you know, we we're throwing out a crazy story about you. Yeah, like Holy or or, or a, AJ Brown. Yeah. Like going absolutely No Antonio, Antonio Brown. Brown. Antonio Brown going absolutely ape shit. It's just and a, fucking going nuts. It's just an act, dog. Just pull off your jersey in the middle of the game against the Jets and quit on the field. Yeah. Like yeah. He, he started throwing his jersey into the fucking crowd. Fucking Holy scripted. Shit, it's scripted. Dude. I can't believe you went and pulled Deshaun. <laughs> he pulled Deshaun in, fucking Antonio Brown with That's the like, fucking the Dubai clip. Oh, that was wild. When hey, we Antonio, about I know you're Yo, not this... in the league anymore, but we're going to need you to take your clothes off in the public assault pool someone. in Dubai and sexually assault somebody. We talked about that. On Yo, an and then episode, like yeah. he, he got like recently, I don't know if any uh, he got uh, officially kicked off Snapchat because he was tweeting or uh, storing pictures of his like baby mama blowing him. Well, that'll get you banned. But like, holy shit, dude. Like, how you gonna do that to your kid's mama? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, I mean, maybe there's some refs out there that are ginger on some calls and maybe don't like certain players. Yeah, maybe that happens in all sports. And maybe there's a call or two that doesn't go the way. I wouldn't say it's scripted. Maybe it's like, there's corrupt refs. There's corrupt officials everywhere. So maybe a call or a play gets or a touchdown gets reversed, but I don't think a whole script for a season is scripted. This is by I, far I, way too insane. I don't even think it's possible. There's not enough skill to pull that off. That's what uh, I was talking to somebody about this, and I asked their opinion on it, and that's what they said. They're like, there's no way. Like, how can you how can you script like a 60-yard ball dropped or like, a, you know, like somebody missing an oblivious tackle? It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. No, no, it doesn't happen. Or just and if the, it does, it's oblivious. I want to know how they script the David Tyree helmet catch. <laughs> yeah, right. How do they script that? Or the other thing, if you if you're going to talk about the referees and maybe a blown call here or there, or a touchdown taken away, you can't just consider one referee. You have to take in the whole team of referees because it's not just one guy, and, and that's a big conspiracy in itself. And if you're going to go that level, you're going into the wilderness. The only one I can think of that maybe could play into this was the miscall call in the Saints. 
the oh. pass interference. Oh, the guy who used to be on the Bills. That was crazy, dude. Cost the Saints a trip to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. Now, like, and that's not to say there isn't, like, some crazy act. Like, what was the, the NBA ref, the Tim Donahue or whatever his name is? Yeah, like, that's a big. He was betting on games and calling free throws. But in the NBA, it's more plausible because you can actually legitimately put points on the board. Yeah, like, it's a good big points betting with a spread. Yeah, like you can literally say, "All right, here you're going to get two free shots, two free shots." Even if you put someone on the one yard line in the NFL, it's not a guarantee you're going to score. Big facts. We like, saw that with Minnesota. We stopped them, and then Josh <laughs> oh, Allen man. fumbled in the end zone. And there's no way you could have scripted that. Could you script that, Josh? <laughs> hey, fumble the ball on the one yard line. <laughs> yeah, I think you could. I think you could script that. I think you could. Or or uh, Justin Jefferson's catch. Could you script that catch? That no. he made. Yeah, exactly. He, no. no. Exactly. The feats of athleticism that these guys pull off is just like to say that that is scripted is an insult to any athlete. Well, and that's that was the point I was trying to make. Yeah. These guys are world class athletes. The things that they do on the field are unbelievable. Yeah. The the speed, the athleticism, the the ability to entertain us, I, I, like what they do. Some of the shit, like you said, is it's just unscript. Like you cannot script it. All of us have played various sports. There is too much personal pride that I think that would happen. Just that too. Him. That like, too. Geo did. Yeah, to be too. fair, uh, he did play a sport where you probably could uh, script it. Right. That's yeah. probably the like. But he any said pride. combat he said sports. Pride, like, yeah. But then that's you like, could script combat sports. I well, yeah. They that. say box, I believe that. But they say like boxing is fixed. You take a loss. You take a die. But I see sometimes in the but in the to, results of a uh, match. Yeah. That seem a little. Weird, but like to, a, but the Gio's point: personal pride. When you're in a fight or a combat sport, do you want to take a loss, a hit, a dive? You don't. No guy wants to take that, unless you're getting paid. It would. You would just be the ultimate pariah. And Look it, at every person that has ever been accused of gambling on a sport that they. Calvin Ridley wasn't playing in games and got suspended for a year. Pete Rose. Uh, was coaching, yeah. The who's the fuck? What's the fucking team that bet on the world? The fi- oh, supposedly the sh- fixed the World Series. The nineteen nine, either the nineteen nineteen or the nineteen eighteen Chicago White Sox. Actually, that could have tied in perfectly to our mafia episode that we just did for our Down to Her podcast because it was fixed by Bugsy Siegel. But it could, it could have tied in. But yeah, like come on, you can't script everything. It's too impossible. It would consider way too many people, way too much conspiracies, and people can't keep secrets for shit. So what are we thinking? Debunked. Debunked. This Fake. is debunked. Fake news. Debunked. Take that straight shit across this. Take that shit off. That's a memorabilia. That's a memorabilia item. One day, guys, you can get this on <laughs> eBay. We're gonna start the bidding at 10k. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. It starts at 10k. I love it. I, I love that. I won't autograph it for no less than 15k. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. Up next, we go in with the uh, spy balloon uh story. This is just is absurd. That, the spy balloon. All right. So, you know, over the last week, there was a Chinese spy balloon that came across from Alaska. I think Jerry's got the picture up of the flight path of the balloon. So it came through from the uh, Alaska, went down through Canada, all across like Wyoming, Montana. And then it drifted all the way to South Carolina before it got shot down in the Atlantic Ocean. Big news because... No one really saw this until a pilot came across this plane and saw it and called it in. Although there are reports that people saw it coming in through Alaska by the Aleutian Islands, and none of it was really reported until it got in Montana. Uh, big spying accusations from the Chinese government. What I don't understand is this. How the fuck does this go seven days without getting shot down? Like, nobody knows what the fuck the thing is. So... The only argument I can say is for the not shooting it down over U.S. soil is you don't know what's in it. What if there's like a crazy gas type thing? And I can listen to that argument. Or a a bomb or something. Right. Like you shoot it down. It's like a kill switch type thing because chemical warfare now is just a drone drop away. Or it could have been a EMP, an electric uh, pulse mechanism, and it just wipes out your whole electrical grid. Could have been something like that. Yeah. Like I can buy that argument. I just don't know what the entire details are in regards, but apparently this has happened before. So, uh, so this goes, this gets to some maybe conspiracy issues too. They said right after this came out 
the Biden administration immediately said, oh, this was happening. You know, it happened before in the Trump administration. They said, well, when did you figure this out? And they're like, oh, just now through unreleased and undocumented things. And then they came out and said the people in the military didn't tell Trump about this. So I don't know if I believe that or I know, but I do know if this did happen during any presidency and you didn't tell the president, that looks very bad on the military. Sure. Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, very irresponsible. Borderline treasonous, possibly, to not tell the the chief in charge. I, I don't. I believe that every <sighs> commander in chief knows what's happening in the country to a degree. Like, I remember there was a thing like every day when you're president, there's a file on your desk that's just like a daily briefing. So I don't know if that's the case. I don't. It, there's so many talking points in. Every media outlet's going to have their bias towards either a Republican, Democrat, whatever. So I believe that Biden knew, Trump knew, all that stuff. But that goes back to everything as far as that goes. You get literally go back to Pearl Harbor where they allege that FDR yeah. knew that uh, the attack on there was coming and he just didn't do anything about it. And they it. let it happen so we'd get into war. Yeah, that's a that's a whole that could be a conspiracy in itself, too. Like, Never been proven otherwise. So there, there's a completely different conversation on that. So I, I find it hard to believe that they don't know because we know on a local level, like how much you can find out about a person through things. I can only imagine what the federal government has at their disposal. Like it's probably just beyond our f- mental comprehension. The memes on this were could be another conspiracy but the memes on this were pretty funny they were all the pictures of like spy balloon and they're like writing on it said totally not spying <laughs> <laughs> i like the one it was like the the balloon spying over florida and it was like <laughs> hillbillies throwing fucking beer bottles at it, it like they're just throwing bottles at it uh, uh, Flor- floridians would have shot that down no problem no yeah, question guaranteed yeah. you got i like the uh the one it, you who was the there was like the congressman swalwell that it was like banging the chinese spy yeah <laughs> yeah and uh someone said like someone photoshopped it and it's like the the girl's name was like fang fang yep and, and it's like too swell well from fang fang here's your valentine's day gift <laughs> <laughs> that, actually that might be my favorite one that was pretty good but yeah just the crazy story of it last week how do you let a spy balloon go all the way across the country um i just think if this was like World War II times, 1940s, uh, this wouldn't have happened. I think this would have been shot down as soon as it crossed U.S. airspace yeah. in Alaska. Yeah. So I don't know, man, what happened. It's pretty crazy. We're living in some crazy times. That's all I got to say. Let us know what you guys think about it. Yeah, drop a comment. All right. Up next, uh, we got an Italian hitman <laughs> who was allegedly dissolving bodies in acid, was found almost 20 years later after being on the run, working as... What else but a pizza maker in France? <laughs> so there's a funny picture there. Um, that actually is the actual guy who was caught in France. The other person is Mario. <laughs> not to be confused. And not all Italians are... I think that's a household name, Caleb. I don't think you had to tell us that that was Mario. I don't, I don't know. Maybe some of these you know, Gen Zers might not know Mario. I don't know. They do play their video games a lot, so they probably know. But... I just wanted it to be known that not all Italian Italians are named Mario, and they all don't work in pizza shops, and they all are not in the mafia as well. I'm pretty sure Mario was a plumber, just so you know. Well, yeah, but he could have been in the mafia. He's Italian. I, I'm just saying, I'm pretty <laughs> sure he was a plumber. Oh, yeah. Him and Luigi plumbers. Yeah. But yeah, crazy story. Guy on the run from... Um, he wasn't part of the S- Sicilian mafia. He was part of... Uh, I think it's called Ningrata. It's part of the, the Napoleon in Napoli. It's part of their mafia. And they are pretty much a lot hardcore than the Sicilian Mafia. They deal drugs, humans, everything. They're pretty rough and tumble when it comes to assassinations. They'll go after politicians where when we talk about the American mob and the Sicilian mob, they don't really go after politicians. But I heard uh, the Negrata goes hard. They go after everyone. So this guy was on the run, apparently a hitman, a boss in the family. And he really went into hiding. And just to be found in a pizzeria, I think it's pretty funny. It's a funny story. I mean, of all places, you know, you ran to you ran to 
France and you became a, pin, a like a pizza maker. I, I mean, I, it's pretty, it's funny. I mean, I guess if you found this guy in Poland working at a pierogi factory, you'd be like, hey, Mario, what are you doing here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You would know right away. This guy was out of place. But, you know, I guess, you know, funny story. Will I, maybe he'll serve justice. We'll see what's to happen. Maybe follow up on this story. Dude, all I hear is geo breathing. Well, I just happened to look up, and LeBron James is six, point, six points away from breaking the all-time scoring record. Oh, yeah. Oh. So, big news. Uh, LeBron James is on the brink of breaking the all-time scoring record in the NBA. He needs 36 points. I guess he's got 30, so he's... And there's uh, on the an entire quarter left, so it's going to happen tonight. He'll do it. I did bet that he'll do it, so I think that'll win. There hey. you go. Hey, Not What's a good it? betting night for me. All right. <laughs> I'll take that win, though. I won my bet. Yeah, I'll take that win, though. All right. Beautiful. A little nasally today. My bad, guys. Yeah, dude. Are you fuck, Dude, what the fuck, man? You're like... <sighs> I think we're all getting down with a little sickness because I'm feeling... There ain't nice. no fucking sickness here, dude. Oh, yeah. If you got sickness, get the fuck out of here, dude. <laughs> 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 we are not uh, sponsored by Disturbed at all. I'm a little... I'm feeling a little stuffed up and plugged as well, but I mean, Whoa. who knows what's going on here? Pause. Pause. <laughs> but yeah, guys, those are some crazy stories, some news. What do you mean sports, by that? Some news, some sports, um, some conspiracy theories, as always. Uh, let us know what you think. What's your favorite conspiracy? What do you think about ours? Oh, we got one more story for you. Yeah. UFC. We got Conor McGregor coming back. Uh, I'll let Gio explain this one away. He's the Gio wanted to talk about this. So, Gio, Conor McGregor, Chandler, coming back, bro. What do you, I mean, what do you, what do you think about that, bud? First fight after breaking his leg. Uh, against Dustin Poirier, uh, they're coaching the Ultimate Fighter, so they're doing a little bit of a the reality show to build up to it. It's gonna be fun. Both these guys are like big on social media. They talk a lot of trash. Uh, I like Chandler. You know, I like McGregor. I think it's just he's he's good for the sport in the fact that he brings a lot of eyeballs. I gotta say, I'm not huge on UFC. But when Conor McGregor fights, you better believe I'm tuning in because I'm rooting against him. Yeah. He's... And that means something. <laughs> I have a question. That means something. Um, Gio would probably know. I, ho- I hope you know. Is this going to be on network television or is this going to be like a whole pay-per-view series? <laughs> there is not a chance in hell that Conor McGregor is not on pay-per-view. Okay. I just wanted to you know make sure if we can and when we can watch this, you know, I'd like to see... This whole series go down, but yeah, the show is on ESPN Plus. Okay, yeah, well, good thing I have ESPN. ESPN Plus. Like, but the final fight, McGregor will... Chandler will be oh, on pay per view, no doubt. That'll probably and, sell out like crazy. Uh, they were like Chandler was just saying, he goes, eh, this probably does two million buys, which would be the like UFC pay per view record. Like, to do a million buys is hard to do in this era right now, like with the pirating stream era. So I, he'll do it. He just has that type of following, and they both have crazy followings. Yeah, like Chandler's known as just this. I'm either gonna knock you out or get knocked out type of fighter, and McGregor's McGregor. Like you don't even need to talk about it at this point. This dude's in movies now. He's just transitioning into the next level of stardom post fight career soon. So. I don't think we have too many fights for him left, to be honest with you. I think if he loses, it's done. pretty much it. Like, you might be able to sell a rematch with Chandler or maybe another Nate Diaz fight, but if you don't win, you don't sell. Um, one last question to this. So the premise is they're going to coach a whole team of fighters, their fighters fight each other, and then at the end they fight each other? That's what's going on? So the Ultimate Fighter, it's been around for a while. Like uh, It's credited with actually, like, getting the UFC popular. Like the first one was uh Forrest Griffin versus Stefan Bonner. Unfortunately, Stefan Bonner actually uh, passed away a couple, like a month or two ago. And basically what happens is each coach picks a group of guys. I don't know how many there'll be on this particular season, but they essentially just do a tournament over that point, And then the final two guys will fight. Usually they do two weight classes. I think it's eight and eight for each weight class. So that just brings it down to that. And then the coaches fight and it's just to kind of build the hype. You get to see these guys as they're, you know, 
building their personality and their own little brand because they get to be on network television. So hopefully just brings a little influx of talent and, you know, you get to see a little magic happen in a good fight. Little magic. All right. Well, we will be checking that out. We'll be giving some updates. I personally look forward to uh, Conor McGregor winning. Jerry, I know, is rooting against. Uh, Gio, who do you got in this one? I mean, I would like to see McGregor win. I think it's better for the sport just because he brings more eyeballs. All right, guys. And I that, agree to that. I, I do always watch the Conor McGregor fights. So who like, do, who I, hate, I hate him, though. I also do really like Michael Chandler. I just like his attitude, the way he carries himself. Like, you know, he's an American wrestler, man. Dude wrestled, was a walk-on at Missouri. Wrestling? And, That's not wrestling. <laughs> and he's a beast. All right, fellas. Well, with that being said, that wraps up the After Herf. Um, we look forward to seeing you next week. We'll wrap up the Super Bowl. We'll talk about that. And, guys, like always, be on the lookout for our barrel pick coming up in stores at Key Liquor. Um, follow the IG, the Facebook, the TikTok. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. We appreciate the likes. Leave a funny comment. And always reach out to us. DM us. Whatever you want, we're here for you guys. We love our audience. And uh, you know what? Smoke them if you got them. Sayonara. Peace.